everyone and hello from Hong Kong. If you saw my recent video called Goodbye for Now London, then you may already know that I'm going to be in Hong Kong for the summer. Currently, so far so good, but it's so hot and humid, hence why I've got a fan blowing at full force because otherwise I'm going to be a sweaty mess. Um, but I thought today I would film a video on 15 things <laughs> you should know before traveling to Hong Kong. Now, I've been here six or seven times in total, so this is all based from my experience from coming here a few times. Um, and I just thought it might be a handy little video if you've never been to Hong Kong, or maybe if you're local, then you can say whether I've got it right or wrong. If you are new to this channel, hello, I'm Shu, and welcome to my channel. Consider subscribing if you want to see more lifestyle, travel, and food videos, and give this video a big thumbs up if you find it useful. But anyway, let's get cracker lacking. Number one, Cantonese is the local language. Language. Now, most residents will speak English, but day to day they do use Cantonese and not Mandarin, and there are differences between the two dialects in Chinese. Number two, Hong Kong have their own currency. So if you're traveling about in China or you go to Macau, Macau also have their own currency, then consider exchanging money is Yanmanbei in Cantonese, but the Chinese Yuan is different uh, to Hong Kong, so it won't really be accepted here. Number three, you must get an octopus card uh, when you're in Hong Kong. Well, you don't have to get it, but it will help you out a lot. And you can get this at the airport or most 7-Elevens, which is dotted around all over Hong Kong. Now, this is a prepaid debit card almost, and it's actually a more advanced version of the Oyster card that we get in London because you can use it for all eight different modes of public transport in Hong Kong, hence why it's called the Octopus card, because octopus have eight tentacles. But not only that, apart from public transport, you can also use it at some fast food restaurants, things like McDonald's, things like the gym, 7-Eleven shops, even the cinema. So yeah, there's a lot of different uses for it, and it's just just so easy to top up. You just go to a 7-Eleven, go to an Ad Value machine and MTR station, top up and away you go. It's so good. Now there's a tourist card available for 50 Hong Kong dollars. And that's roughly about five pounds uh, in British pounds. Um, and then you can refund that at the end of your stay. But it is so handy and so good because a lot of places will accept that over cash as well. Number four, have cash on you, especially at fast food restaurants because most places only accept cash. And also when you're exchanging money, it's quite hard to exchange it at an actual bank unless you've got a local bank account. So you can normally only exchange it at specific money exchange counters so yeah maybe try and exchange it before you come here number five have tissues on you a lot of restaurants don't actually serve tissues and they're super super cheap when you buy at a local supermarket or at a watson's or a manning like it's so cheap and it's a lot more handy as well because it's not good having a big old meal and have noodle juice all down your chin and not be able to uh wipe your face Number six, it's not just about the skyline. Now, Hong Kong is very, very famous for its skyline, but actually two thirds of the city is the countryside. There's over 50 different hiking routes. There's so many different public gardens and botanical gardens. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to go hiking, to go sightseeing. Um, and also Hong Kong Island is only one of 260 islands that surround the place so yeah there's plenty of exploring to do not just the skyline number seven if you are a foodie like me then you have come to foodie paradise because there is so much food on offer everything from Dai Pai Dong, which is an open air store street food high-end restaurants and Michelin star restaurants there are so 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 much choice here and pretty much any cuisine you can find it here in fact I think there is actually one restaurant for every 300 people so that's pretty insane and also bear in mind that service charge differs normally service charge would happen during dinner time or on weekends and weekdays they normally forego the service charge so yeah different restaurants may have different rules oh 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 and also when you're here make sure to try the fruit because the fruit is on another level now I am a fruit lover I love mangoes I love lychees I love long nan like all of that stuff is pretty hard to find in England and when you do it's extortionate it's so so expensive like mango steam for example forget about it in London but it is so cheap here it's so fresh and the quality is amazing so you can find us at fruit markets wet markets supermarkets make sure to try the different fruits because it's one of the best things about coming to Hong Kong number eight be prepared to share tables especially at places like diners they have a policy where it's just be quick, be efficient, eat and then go. But normally because there's so many people during peak times that you will be uh, sharing tables with other people. It's a good way to speak and chat to other people. I always make friends with people because normally they compliment my Cantonese, which is always nice. Number nine, now this mostly applies to diners again, but normally when you pay the bill, you either take the bill and go up to the cashier or they'll come up to you and they'll stand by you as you pay. In Western countries, they normally hand you the bill and then go away while you pay and then they come back. But here, they normally like to stand and wait for you to pay, which might be a bit different, but um, yeah, just pay and go. Now, number 10, okay, aircon. 
aircon. The aircon is so, so cold here. Now, outside it's humid, it's hot, it's sticky, but as soon as you go inside, especially in a shopping centre, the aircon is in full blast inside and in restaurants. So, yeah, you can normally catch a cold from it too when you're not careful, so make sure to bring a little light jacket or layer with you just to cover up a bit. Okay, number 11. If there's one thing that's consistent about Hong Kong, it's the humidity. And during the summer months, it can get up to 85% to 95%. So it's, it's an age joke. It can get hot, it can get sticky, and you'll be sweating in places that you did not know that you could sweat at. For example, once I turn 25, I started sweating up here. I started sweating on the upper eyelid. It's not an attractive thing. Um, so yeah, be prepared for that. Pretty much when I'm in Asian countries and it's humid, I don't really wear makeup. I don't really bother with styling my hair because it's just wasted effort and a waste of products. So yeah, bear that in mind if you have to do a lot of your hair, you probably save a fortune from products anyway. Okay, number 12. Local taxis are actually cheaper than Uber, especially in short distance. Now, Uber is available in Hong Kong. You're probably better off just getting a local taxi. Now, there are three different types and three different colors. Red serves pretty much most of Hong Kong Island, apart from Lantau Island, which is Dayu San. Green only serves new territories, and blue only serves Dayu San, which is where the the Big Buddha, the Big Buddha <laughs> Monastery is. Um, so yeah, different colors for different districts. Uber is actually generally better for long distance, whereas the local taxis are better for short distance. So whilst it's easy to jump on the app, it's actually probably easier just to hail one down. Apart from when it's in a double line, then you can't can't hail one. Number 13, avoid the MTR at peak times. Like most busy countries with the metro station or subway stations, it gets pretty, pretty busy when it comes to peak time, and especially in Hong Kong, you are packed in like a sardine. So when you can, try and avoid riding on the public transport during peak times. Instead, go for a stroll. Hong Kong is a very, very walkable city, and you just don't want to be stuck in there, trust me. It's not, it's not a nice feeling or nice experience because there's a lot of people, there are a lot of smells, and it's not the good kind of smell either. Also, 95% of the population in Hong Kong actually use public transport, so imagine that during between 5 to 7 p.m. at night. It's, it's not going to be fun. There is aircon on the MTR though, so it's not like the central line in London when it's 35 degrees during like a freak heat wave where it's really, really like a sauna downstairs. Number 14, shops stay open later, but they also open later too. So normally you can find with some shops that they'll stay open till about 10 o'clock at night, which is great if you're a shopaholic because it means that you can go shopping all day long, or you can go shopping after dinner and the shops will still stay open. But it also means that sometimes they open later too. Some boutiques might even open at 11 a.m. Consider having a lion and then shop later instead after dinner. Win-win. Oh, and number 15. This is, I think, quite an important one. You don't really get refunds, especially with clothing items and especially with sale items. So they always have changing rooms, so make sure you try before you buy because if you want a refund, pretty much a no-go zone. I think you can exchange within seven days or 30 days, depending on whether it's a big-name shop or a boutique. But yeah, try before you buy because otherwise you're just going to end up having an unnecessary argument with the shop staff. That is my 15 things to know before traveling to Hong Kong. I hope you found it useful. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you could give it a big thumbs up uh, for more Hong Kong tips and travel tips and advice and things. If you are coming to Hong Kong for the first time, have a wonderful, wonderful time in the city. It's one of my favorite places on earth. I love the atmosphere, I love the people, I love the food, I love everything about it. It's not much not to love to be honest um, and if you're a local then please give me some more tips on what i should do this summer but yes i hope you're having a wonderful morning afternoon or evening and i shall see you in the next video see you later bye